Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with a quick follow-up on the 8-bit Doe controller I reviewed the other day because a viewer wrote in, Matt Modega, uh, curious about something he noticed on prior editions of the 8-bit Doe controller and was wondering if the new ones have seen any improvements. Uh, specifically, he says, when you mash the controller from left to right, sometimes you get a random diagonal in the process. Uh, so instead of it just going left to right, you sometimes get it showing a uh, combo up and right, which of course might be an issue in games that require a very uh, precise amount of movement, like a fighting game or something like that. So I figured I would do a quick test here with the new controllers and see if they've improved that at all or not. And we'll take a look with some slow motion footage here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that these 8-bit dough controllers came in free of charge from 8-bit dough. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this update and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's take a look at some footage I shot here with my iPhone at 240 frames per second. And what I was doing here was rocking my finger back and forth between the uh, left and right side of the D-pad. And you'll see that occasionally it is picking up a random uptick there, which means that we will be getting some of those random diagonals as we go back and forth. And I found that you really have to keep your finger, or your thumb in this case, uh, very much centered on the D-pad to prevent these accidental button pushes from showing up. It is still very sensitive uh, as prior versions of the controller were. And I apologize for all the blinking here going on with my slow motion footage. Uh, this experience here was the same experience I had with the Pro Controller as well. So I think if you had issues before, uh, buying this new controller is not going to make them any better. Now I also ran the same test on my 30 year old NES game controller. And I would get a couple of errant diagonals here and there as you can see, but generally not as many. Uh, the older controller, the real NES controller, uh, just is not as sensitive as the 8-bit Doe controller is. And I don't know if that's a function of this old NES controller being old, or if the 8-bit Doe controller is just that much more sensitive. But nonetheless, I was getting less of those errant diagonals uh, with the older controller than I was with the new 8-bit Doe controllers here. So certainly the D-pad on the 8-bit Doe is a lot more sensitive than what we're seeing here with original stock NES hardware, and that uh, may or may not help your gameplay. I guess it really depends on the kinds of games that you're playing. Now, if you're curious as to how we are getting this test executed, I've got my Analog NT Mini here that is running an NES game cartridge that tests game controllers. You can hit the buttons on your controller and have those buttons register on screen here. It works quite well, and this uh, application would actually run on an original NES as well. Uh, this is one of my favorite devices of all time, by the way, because not only does it run the NES pretty much perfectly on a 1080p display, it also runs most of the game consoles from the 80s as well. So my Atari, my ColecoVision, my Sega Master System, my NES, everything is in here and it looks beautiful on my OLED TV upstairs. And we've got, when you've got one of these uh, wired controllers on it as well, there's like practically zero latency. It is a really, really nice game system. And if you're into old games, uh, definitely check it out. And what I've been doing is just running this test here to see how uh, the errant diagonals go. Now we do get occasional uh, blips here back and forth as we're using the original controller, but it's not as bad as the uh, 8-bit dough is. And again, I just think this is a matter of sensitivity and perhaps maybe some of the design choices that went into it. Because I can see how a more sensitive controller might be more helpful in some areas, but some games may not work as well. So you can see as we do that same motion here going back and forth, we're getting uh, more of those errant diagonals just because this thing really is a much more sensitive D-pad. Uh, but what I found is that if you're pushing all the way down to the left here, it takes a lot more effort to get that diagonal to fire off. So it really is this rocking motion that uh, makes the biggest difference. And if you go slower, as you can see, it's not as pronounced, uh, but you really need to keep your thumb kind of centered on the D-pad as you go back and forth. And if you're used to one of these older controllers that doesn't have that level of sensitivity, I can definitely see how this might be an issue for some folks. And again, it's just, I think, a matter of how they uh, have designed these D-pads and maybe what their design choices were. And it's funny, this was something that I didn't really notice when I've done prior reviews on these controllers because perhaps the games that I play are not as sensitive to an errant diagonal as perhaps a fighting game might be or something like that. So uh, definitely more sensitive here, so just be advised about that. However, we did note in the review that they have improved the latency not only on these new controllers but the older ones too. So if you update the firmware on them, 
Uh, you should see better performance, at least insofar as latency is concerned with your existing controllers. But I definitely wanted to do a follow-up on this because it was something we hadn't tested before. It is still an issue if it was an issue before for you, so just bear that in mind. I also ran a similar test on my Xbox One controller, and I found that uh, its D-pad was a lot less sensitive to errant diagonals. So you might want to go out and maybe pick up a few different controllers that you might be able to return later and find the ones that work best for your particular application. And I can definitely see that if you were a Super Nintendo gamer for many years and you got that muscle memory locked in, uh, that could be an issue on this controller because it might behave slightly differently when it comes to diagonals than the original did, especially older controllers that have perhaps been worn down over the years a bit as well. I'm going to put a link down below in the video description to a video that somebody posted about how to make the controllers less sensitive. And I would imagine what they did for their 8-bit Doe controllers a couple of months ago will still be relevant now. So if you have one of these things and you really want to improve the experience on those diagonals, check out that video. I think it'll help uh, maybe get a bit of a less sensitive controller experience for you on your 8-bit Doe controller. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.